Um, all right, so I'm going to share my screen one more time. All right, can everyone see? Okay, beautiful. So I like to set the intention. I used to, I like to sit down with people for 40 to 60 minutes, but I'm doing like deeper work with people. So you don't necessarily need to do this, um, but I like to set the intention. Um, usually what I say um, is I wanna uncover exactly what your challenge or problem is, like your biggest pain point. So you gotta be honest with me, right? If you're not telling me what the, the real pain point is, we're wasting our time. Um, I wanna see if we're a good fit to work together. And my only question is if I can 100% guarantee I can solve your issue and we'd be a good fit for each other and literally everything is in alignment, I'm gonna check for alignment. Would you be open to hearing what I have to offer at the end? And the person's gonna be like, of course. Yeah, that makes sense, right? So one, you're setting the tone. You're the leader, you're the authority. And two, you're also asking for permission to sell them something at the end before you even start the call, right? Who, if you're getting on a coaching call with someone and they asked you, Hey, you know, I'm going to let you know if it's an alignment, you know, I'm going to make you an offer. Does that feel a little bit better than like getting through this whole thing, cracking you open, you know, maybe making you cry and then at the end, like, Oh yeah. So here's $5,000 thing. You know, it's like almost like a sneak. You just be open upfront and honest with them. And they, they really appreciate that. Then finding the pain points. I'm going to give you guys a simplified version. What's the biggest pain? Let's talk about it. Why are we here? Right? Figure that out. Dive deeper into it. Um, ask them more questions. I'll show you. And then we're going to talk about eliciting criteria and values. So basically, criteria and values are what drive someone's identity. Uh, the way that I like to talk about this is imagine uh, you were walking out and you, you walked uh, on the street and you saw someone's car that was just straight up smashed. Like someone's ex just straight up took a baseball bat to it, keyed it up, stabbed the tires, everything, the whole nine yards. What would your reaction be to that, seeing that? Who wants to go? Let's, let's tune in with uh, Melanie. If you saw someone's car just straight up, just, oh man, damn. How would you react? What would your first reaction be? Um, I would have empathy, but also I'm one to stay in my own lane and just kind of focus on, um, what I can control. So I would maybe call 911 and assist them with help as much as I could, but I would also not let it affect my whole day and try to just remain separate from that, um, that horrible thing that happened to that person. You're a, you're a special person to call 911. That's like going way above and beyond and reaching out. So I love that. So my question is, how would you feel if that was your car and you walked out and saw it? Um, it would be hard, it would, horrific. I mean, it would feel really bad. Um, you know, it's something that happened to my car. It's not me. So I have to just remain calm and just handle the situation as much as I could and, you know, get help with my car um, and just... Yeah, I just try to learn and grow from it. And how would you feel? Deal with it. How would I feel? I would feel upset, probably. Anger, frustration, grief, yeah. sadness, all these things. So what's the difference? And thank you. Thank you, Melanie. You guys, what's the difference between someone else's car getting janked up and your car getting broken up? The difference is it's your car. It's my car. No, I have to defend my car. It's a part of me. So you value that car because it's a part of you. It's personal, exactly. So what happens is when we figure out what people value and then we figure out how they know that they've received that value, we're tapping into the deepest, most primal part of their brain. It's saying like my freedom, my financial freedom, my perfect relationship. Like what is your deepest desire? And then how do you know you got it? Well, you'll know you get it when your partner loves you unconditionally, when your partner uh, gives you your love language. Isn't it? So you're, what's do you value? How do you know you get it? And then you just link it into, if they're aligned, heart-centered sales, with what you got. And people are like, oh my God, you can give me my deepest dream and take away my deepest pain? Take my money, right? So I'm gonna show you who wants to be, let's all take a deep breath in. 
And I'm just going to close the door to the kitchen so I'm not being distracted by noise. Okay, be right back. All right, and I'm gonna put a little pep in my steps so we can we can do this and get through this uh, on time. So, who wants to be my guinea pig? You can stick with me if you want. <laughs> stick with you, okay. Let's take a deep breath in. And now, so you guys see what I did? I do that with everyone. Take a deep breath in. Breathe out, I do three, hold it at the top, takes them out of their brain, drops them into their heart space, connects us and syncs us up. And I'm already leading them through something. Mm -hmm. In hypnosis, this is called a compliance set or a yes set. In hypnosis, what you do is you get them to say, yes, stand over here. Okay, I'm standing over here. Just, you know, let me see your hand for a moment. Okay, yeah, you can see my hand. And I'll take a deep breath in and I'll close your eyes. They say, yes, 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 yes. And now you're leading them and their brain kind of turns off. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So I'm just, I'm giving you guys the behind the scenes. So Melanie, I'm going to pin you. What, what's your biggest pain point, my friend? Let's just drop into it. What's your biggest pain, biggest challenge right now in life? Mm. Well, trying to get my business um, launched. <laughs> um, at a deeper level, just feeling connected to um, the world around me and helping other women um, go with um, what I was struggling with alone for so long, five years ago, I want to help the, that younger me, I want to help them. Um, maybe that will help me feel like what I went through was for a, for a bigger purpose. Mm. All right, so let's take a deep breath into that. So we can definitely dive into that piece, which is you went through pain, you went through like, and I can feel it even too, like in the heart space, right? Like you went through some darkness and some shadows and now you wanna help people out of that suffering, yep. right? And it sounds like that's linked to needing to understand what to do with your business, right? Yep. So within that, what's the biggest challenge right now that's keeping you from helping people through what you've been through? It was, um, a very difficult time for me, just feeling so alone um, when I was going through it. So I'm struggling with feeling like this is the right path for women to go on is to tackle their relationship um, by themselves without their partner being on board. Um, I got through it and I feel like my partner and I are so strong now, but that might not be the case for, for everyone. So, um, I'm struggling with whether or not to take what I know about feminine masculine energies and apply that to women in relationships versus just like moms in general and helping them with everything in their life from mom, mom, moms who have their own businesses to just trying to find clarity on exactly who am I trying to help? What is my purpose? What, who, what do I want to focus my, my skills on? Beautiful. So finding clarity within... <laughs> Um, basically your target audience yeah and I'm feeling I'm feeling a fear under that what's the fear so it's like I don't know if I can help this person or this person or if that's the best road for them what are you what are you afraid of hmm. what's blocking you from finding that clarity um I guess fear of um fear of failure probably just not being able to affect people's lives and um yeah, putting so much work and effort into this um, passion project of mine and having it just kind of fall flat and people don't really want to hear what I have to say or want to or really care to hear about my um, my journey and what I can help them with. That's so good. So I'm going to I'm going to share my screen so people can see kind of how I take notes with this. You're doing so good. So fear of failure. Which is my passion project falling flat. And what was the other piece? Um, just not being able to help women in the way that I want to. Um, okay. So 
So I'm going to uh, elicit beliefs. So I'm afraid to fail because. I'm afraid to fail because. Yep, just finish the sentence. I got you. I'm afraid to fail because it would mean that um, that I'm not good enough. Mm, and I'm not good enough because. Um, I'm different than other people. Um, mm. Maybe that, you know, in my heart, I feel like I'm unique and I'm put on this planet for a reason, but maybe not. Maybe I'm just different. And maybe, you know, maybe people will see that and just kind of laugh at me. Because? Because um, yeah, because I don't fit in. Them? Maybe I don't fit in. Mm -hmm. So let's take a deep breath in. So what I want to point out for everyone is her fear of failure is actually a fear of rejection and abandonment. Okay. So what I want you to understand, Melanie, is if you don't handle and deal with your fear of rejection and abandonment, you're not going to be able to help the people that were in your shoes fully in the greatest possible way. So they're going to continue to suffer in, in, in ways that you were. Um, and if you don't move through the block, your, your passion project is probably going to fall because it's like you're blocked. You can't move forward. Does that resonate with you? Yes. All right, so let's take a deep breath in. So for the sake of time, right? Can everyone can everyone see that we just found like a... Melanie, would you say that's a pretty big pain point for you? It is. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm pretty confident, but, you know, on, at, the, at the deepest core level, there, that is there a little bit. There is a little bit of a block probably there around fear of rejection and uh, ab abandonment. Um, my parents were... Um, are a big part of my life in a way. Um, they're my parents. They're not really my, my friends. I don't feel like we're real with each other, truly real. I think they're too caught up in their own um, stuff to really be truly there for me. So How's that make that's you hard. Hmm? How does that make you feel? Yeah, it does make me feel rejected. Like, um, like they're not really seeing me for who I am. And they're just seeing me as the ego part of me who is just there to kind of please them. And I'm, I'm here because and I'm here. I'm always having to do for them parentification, if you want to call it that, but I'm here doing for them. I don't feel like they're able to give me and to do for me and to give me what I need, which is to be seen and loved by them. Um, but yet we have this relationship and we're together once a week, but it doesn't feel real. <laughs> doesn't feel deep and that's just the way it's going to be probably I don't think I can change them but maybe there's part of me that feels like if I do this work I can help them in some way if they're if they do my course or if they so and then maybe that relationship will be better and they won't fight so much and they'll just be happier <laughs> I don't know they will be happy wow okay so everyone deep breath in so Melanie I want you to know that it's safe for you to feel Okay. And what you just said, I want to just reflect back to you. You just said something really, really big. And I don't know if you really caught it. If my parents took my course, then they would be happier. Yeah. So like, how does that feel when you tune into that? We're here. We got you. Um. It makes me question like my purpose and like, why am I doing, you know? Which makes total sense. Absolutely valid. So let's take a deep breath in. I got you. You're safe. No judgment, no shame. This was me too. My entire life is I needed to help my parents. I needed to save. I need to fix. I need to heal my parents. What I want you to understand is it's because you didn't get a need met that you felt like you're not good enough, okay? Which leads to the survival mechanism of if I meet my parents' needs, then they'll meet my needs. But what happens is you try and meet your parents' needs, but you can't because you're a kid and parent, kids can't parent their, their parents. So you fail and 
your needs continue to go unmet, which makes you feel like you're not good enough even more. Does that resonate? Yeah. So now your whole life and this, this part of you that wants to help end people's suffering is actually you wanting to save your parents so that you can just get your needs met, which is to be seen, heard, and loved. Yeah. Does, that, does that resonate? Yeah, I've kind of fi figured that out um, while I've been going you? through this journey. So it's just kind of making me question, like, what exactly is my purpose? And, you know, should I be helping women with their relationships or maybe something else? Like maybe, maybe that's not, I don't know. It's just kind of confusing. I got you. Let's take a deep breath in. I got you. This is so normal, so natural, so mm -hmm. valid. So what I'd like you to understand is right now, you're still trying to help other people, other women but it's your pain. Yep. So that's why you're confused because you still have the pain, don't know how to solve it yet. So you're trying to help someone else solve their pain, but really what, you, what needs to happen is you need to solve your pain. And then through that process, you, you uncover the medicine that's inside of you. And through that process of uncovering the medicine, you are the medicine. Mm -hmm. So then you just being who you are and seeing and hearing and feeling yourself mm -hmm. you now have the capacity to do that everywhere you go you don't need to know who you help the people who need your medicine receive it everywhere you go does that make sense i think so <laughs> yeah so let's take a deep breath in so and thank you for being the 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 person that's like being vulnerable and doing this right because this is going to help everyone else does everyone feel her heart yeah so can we see how her problem is i don't know who to help and solve i don't know like my business my business right that's why everyone comes in i want more money i want more love i want this but the problem that they're coming in the, the thing that they think is the problem isn't really the problem but they don't know that so your content gets them, you talk to what they think the problem is, you get them in front of you, you tell them what the actual problem is. It's like when you go to the doctor with a headache, right? You're like, I just want you to take the pain away. But when he comes to the doctor, he says, okay, is it dehydration? Is it back problems? Is it chronic stress? Is it your diet? Is it this? You get to become the doctor and let her know what the actual problem is. And if you know what someone's pain is more than they do, automatically you're like well you know what you're talking about right so if you can describe someone's pain better than they can describe it themselves you're automatically the authority does that make sense to everyone yeah so melanie let's take a deep breath in once again quick version criteria and values so it sounds like what you desire is to have a business to help people but we just uncovered that really what you're desiring is to have your needs met. And then through getting your needs met, you can then help the right person. Does that, does that resonate? See that? Mm -hmm. And you can also free yourself from attachments from trying to fix your parents. Because right now what you're building, this business that you're building is aligned with your wounded inner child. If I build this external thing, then I'll get my needs met. And it's the same process and it's not going to work. Can you, can you recognize that? Mm -hmm. So in a perfect world, let's take a deep breath in. And I invite you to close your eyes down. In a perfect world, if I could wave a magic wand, what is your inner child, your deepest heart of hearts, want and need? I just, I want to um, just be comfortable um, financially and just be able to um, work less as a nurse and um, just enjoy my children. I want to help others, but maybe, maybe not, um, maybe I feel like I'm not doing enough in my, my, day job, my career. I feel like I want to do more to help people. So I want to do that, but also in like very limited hours every week. So I want to be able to work 
maybe, I don't know, um, 10 hours a week, um, eliciting change in people's lives and helping women, um, you know, and just receive, you know, I just want to be able to ease into my femininity, enjoy my children, maybe hire a nanny, hire more help around the house and be able to lay on a beach and just relax. <laughs> yeah, so this is good. So now you guys, now we're tuning into what she actually wants. Mm -hmm. So making more money and helping people, really all of that is to get you to a place where you can spend more time with your children, work less, be more in your feminine energy, enjoy your children and relax. Yep. So these are what, this is what she really values. Can everyone see that? She doesn't want to make more money if she doesn't have to. If, if I could just say, hey, I'm going to take you to a beach. You can hang out with your kids. You can help people and you can relax. What would you say to that? 100% yes. 100% yes, right? <laughs> so that's my point. We're not even done. So we're going to drop in a couple layers. So what I would love to ask you, Melanie, is when you think about relaxing with your children at a beach, enjoying your feminine energy, working less, being comfortable financially, I'm curious, why is that important to you? When you really go inward and think. Um, why is that important to me? We only have one life that we're consciously aware of, and I want to... Um, just, you know, live every day, um, doing what I want to do. I don't want to do something because I have to do it. And because that's, what's right. And, you know, my parents go to nursing school, make your own money, have your own career, have a profession. It's always do, 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 do. And I just want to be able to receive and relax. And, but I also want to, um, fulfill my purpose in this life, which is to, I think, help people. I feel like that feels good to me when I'm in my, I love my career as a nurse. I actually do love it. So I feel like it's a good fit for me. Um, I'm nurturing, um, but I just want to work less hours. Um, yeah. And just be able to maybe, I feel like I'm really being called like to a higher, for a higher, like spirituality and all that is so interesting to me, but I would just need to explore all of that. And in what way um, can I help yeah. others? Yeah. So let's take a deep breath in. I invite you to close your eyes. And as everyone can see, that makes total sense, right? Validation. And just so I understand you better, I just have one more question. Ultimately, what will living that one life, the way that you want to live it, where you're doing what you want to do, not doing what someone else wants you to do or you have to do, your parents told you, do, 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 right? All these expectations, it's not your life and wanting to receive and relax, fulfill your purpose, and really enjoy that higher calling, that higher spirituality. Ultimately, what are those things gonna give you? Because um, as human beings, we're looking for an emotional state or an experience. What are those things gonna give you? Um, love and connection. Um, so I want you to feel that for a moment. Tell me what love and connection feels like. Um, it feels warm. It feels like when I'm meditating and there's the white light going through me, it just feels connected and happy. And ultimately, when you tune into that, I want you to tune into that energy and literally breathe that white energy into your body right now. I want you to breathe that love and connection, that warmth into your energy field. And just so I fully understand you as you, one more breath, breathe it in. Feeling love and connection. Ultimately, why is love and connection important to you? I want you to really drop into the emotions here. Um, I'll be seen, understood. It's okay to allow yourself to feel that because you have that right now. You're being seen, you're being understood. You get to feel that love, feel that connection in every pore, every cell of your body and breathe that in.
how does it feel to feel seen and understood? Feels really good. And I feel like I'm trying to give others like what I really, what I need. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I put on this facade, like I'm so strong and I am, I feel like I'm very strong mentally, but we all need that. We all need, you know, a safe container. Um, so I just, I want to get myself to a place of like being able to provide that for others. Um, and it's also what I need as well. I want to do both. I want to have it, receive it, and I want to give it. That makes so much sense. I want to have it and receive it and give it. Right? Yeah. So one more deep breath in. So guys, beautiful. Melanie, that was literally, you allowed yourself to go there. You allowed yourself to be seen and heard and understood. Did you know that's what you really needed and wanted when we started the conversation? Not really. <laughs> I did wanted you, business help. <laughs> yeah, and did you know that your desire to give business help to people was actually you desiring to save your parents? Um, a little, I did know it a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but I felt completely healed around that. Um, I felt, I feel like I, I mean, I do feel like I don't feel anger towards them or unforgiveness. Um, and I, I, I realized that that was, was driving me to do this, which is why I've been questioning um, exactly what my, my purpose is. And I just want to make sure it's from a heart centered reason and not just like self-centered, um, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Right now your purpose your deepest purpose this is going to allow you to do it the financial stability helping other people healing from the inner child wound is actually to become the inner adult become the parent that you always needed and you didn't receive when you were a child mm -hmm. and in becoming that parent for yourself you also become that parent for your client so by you walking through the process of of developing that and meeting your own needs instead of everyone else's mm -hmm. One, you build trust with your inner child. You feel seen, heard, understood. You give that to yourself. So you're no longer going to be in codependent relationships. Never again, because you don't need anything. You get to receive love, but you don't need and you're not attached to other people because you can do that within yourself. And then once you really embody that, everywhere you go, whether you're working with someone or not, you'll find strangers on the road telling you their life story. And you can just give them that one little piece that's going to shift them. How does that feel? That's exactly what it is. And um, mm -hmm. that's what I find does happen sometimes. Um, so it feels good when that happens. And I feel like connected to, to others when I'm able to do, um, to help them. And so I just kind of want to make it a business. It just makes sense to kind of, you know, make it into something like passive income with the course and, you know. Um, yeah my relationship with my husband was codependent. Um, we were together mm -hmm. for 21. Um, but I feel like I've outgrown that. Like, I don't really I feel like that, that way anymore. I was anxiously attached. I'm not that way anymore. Um, so I, by me changing myself, like our relationship has changed. So I kind of, I feel like that's what I have to give to women at this point, but I see other things in my future, possibly like with spirituality and with, um, um, maybe helping entrepreneurs do what I have done once I've done it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I feel like the confidence will come from do, teaching what I, what I know, what I've done for myself. And then once I do that and elicit change in other people's lives, um, maybe I can move on to other things yeah. away from this, like low vibe, like feeling, you know, helping women that are struggling. I don't know if that's like my lifelong task, you know? So Melanie, what if I told you you were this close to everything that you wanted? I, I literally say that to people. I know, and I feel it. <laughs> I know. And what if this little tiny gap, right? Just those little limiting beliefs, those little, per you, as you can see, like I can see the pattern and what's happening. And I know because I've been there, you're this close and all you need is a little bit of help, a little bit of guidance. You're like a caterpillar that is like, I just ate all the food. I have everything I need. I just need to, to have that safe container. That's exactly how I feel. 
And yeah. I was looking for that with course from scratch, um, but I'm, I wasn't really feeling it there. I do feel it here with you. So and then you start. found this, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's my point is, so everyone, this is where I would start to step into the offer and into the sale because she just said like four or five times, that's exactly what I was needing. Exactly what I wanted. Yes. That's it. It's like, literally, she's like, I don't, all I have to say is, look, I have a six week container called the rising Phoenix program where we sit down together and I, I help you develop that inner adult so that you can meet that inner child's need. You already know what to do with business. There's just that fear of failure from that fear of rejection and abandonment. As soon as we shift that, you're going to step out the other side, become that butterfly, and you're going to like embody and show your ideal client what it looks like, what it feels like, what it means to live their truest, most authentic self. Get out of the people pleaser. Get out of the codependency. You've done so much work. Now it's just the little evolutionary cocoon, the safe space. And I can provide that for you in six weeks. So how does that sound to you? Is that, so before we talk about money, how does that sound? How does that feel for you? Um, it feels good. Um, it feels like I'm ready to buy it, honestly. Right. <laughs> um, I, you know, I do need the business side also. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm so new to business. So I feel like I, I've been looking for a business coach for a while. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of finding a good fit. Um, I feel like I have only learned from women up to this point. Um, so like, you know, I don't think that really matters, you know, um, but so yeah. So how about this? As an added bonus, we'll do the six sessions together. And I have a whole 12 week program training people to do exactly what I do for people. I teach some hypnosis, neurolinguistic programming, emotional transmutation, mother, father wound, ancestral healing, heart centered sales. I give you all the templates. I give you all the things that you need to be a, a professional coach. And I teach you how to sell in a way that feels like this. And I'll just, I'll give that to you as a bonus. How does that feel? It's a 12 week program. It's usually $2,000. How does that feel? It feels good. Um, also, it, the work that I'm well, planning on doing with the course, this course from scratch, um, you know, when I was me five years ago, I wouldn't need like to, um, to dive into my inner child at that point. That's not really going to be helpful when you're trying to like learn relationship skills. I feel like you need to just focus on that, like what you're doing in the moment and just getting out of the rut and just learning new skills like respect and vulnerability and all these things. Um, and then the inner child stuff comes. So I feel like I need you after course from scratch, once I finish this, um, the commitment that I made, I want to earn back some money with my course. And then I want to dive into all of that so that I could do my next level with my clients and take them to the next level and, you know, dive in deeper. But I feel like the clients, my, what's it called? My PCPs, um, they're, they're not really at the place of like, I feel like they're like, just get them out of the rut, save their relationship first, and then deal with all of that. Or, you know, obviously if they're in an abusive relationship, that's different, but, um, like 90% of relationships can be saved. Like, honestly, that's how I feel. It's like, it's usually just it takes one partner to like work on themselves. And then it brings, it elevates both of you. When your frequency rises, your partner's frequency rises as well. And they step up to the plate. Um, so I feel like that's where my heart is right now. And I want to um, keep you in mind for like a business coach, when I'm, when I'm done with my course, I want to move on because I feel like I've been diving into so many different things. So I'm in a coaching program right now. Um, and then I'm doing course from scratch as well. Yeah, so it makes total sense. I connect with you so much and I, I do I'm learning so much <laughs> from you. Honestly, I really am. You're I'm like, literally I'm like about to buy seriously. You're doing amazing. So this is what I want everyone to tune in. I want to be aware of time. I want to be respectful of your time, but I also, I feel like this is important. Um, so thank you, Melanie. And just for everyone's understanding, what she just gave was an objection. She said, what she said was not right now because X, Y, and Z. And what I would tune in with that, because I used to say, oh yeah, no worries. You know, whenever's right for you. And then maybe they come back, maybe they don't follow up. But what I want you to understand is you can apply a little, a little bit of pressure, um, but it's not like I'm trying to get you to do something. It's the pressure comes from within because I ask a specific question. So what I would say is, 
what's going to be different and like when do you think that would be you don't have to answer but this is like the line of thinking is like when do you feel you would be ready <laughs> and then i can tune in back to what she said it's like fear of failure i was like well it sounds like you want to help your people help this do that like there's all these things that you want to do that you just shared with me why would you want to wait to do all those things right it's like if we can get all those things done and i can guarantee that 100 percent. like i know how to get you from where you are to where you want to be so you can serve your clients more powerfully what would be the difference between now and like let's say six months from now and it's just clarifying, right? Like, what's the difference? Because a lot of people are just, they just don't want to make a commitment, especially if someone has a fear of failure <laughs> and perfectionism and this and that. Um, so this comes, the ability to do this comes with confidence and the ability to know, like, I know I can help you. And if you don't sign up, it's actually going to be like painful and detrimental to you. Like, I already know that. So I can apply a little bit more. I can lean in a little bit more on that. Um, and ultimately, she gets to say yes or no. I don't want to make her feel like I'm trying to like, ugh, it's heart center sales, right? Um, but when you do that and someone makes a commitment, and then I just tell a, a story like, I wasn't ready, but I signed up for a $15,000 program in January. I was worried. I was afraid I couldn't do it. All my inner child wounds around um, not being able to do homework came up. But you know what? Now I'm on track to make $10,000 a month. Now I know all these different things. Now I have a container of 250 coaches that I can call. I can send a text message and I can get on with support in 10 minutes. What I always needed to be seen, heard, understood, loved, and validated. And I can be that support for you. Where if something comes up for you, you can send me a message and we can jump on a call. Right? So it's like all these different, it's like life experience plus the process plus feeling into her, what she's needing, um, all of it comes together and you're going to sell a lot more um, when you, because as you said, you were like, I, I feel ready to buy, right? That, what was the experience when you were feeling, when I was sharing that and we got to the point, what was the feeling present in you? I felt like you understood me um, and you, um, you're unlike the average person. Like I feel, you know, you obviously have skills and you are able to be a good listener. And um, you also are like about five, 10 steps ahead of me, you know, five, 10 years ahead of me, whatever it is um, in terms of like where you're at and where I want to be. So I feel like I would want to learn from someone like you and kind of quantum leap, like my speed and my, um, in my, my success journey with like my, my business. So it makes sense to learn from someone who is where I want to be. Um, you know, like, so I'm just, I'm just curious, like with Danielle's, um, course, why didn't, did you buy the next level of her course or no? Cause that's kind of where my mind was at. Like I was thinking, make the course and then join her next level program. Um, you know, but I don't know. I'm, I'm going to think about it because I really do Absolutely. like you. I want yeah. you to know, I wasn't actually trying to sell you anything. Okay. Like, we can work together. I want everyone yeah, yeah. to know I do do one-on-one -on -one stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're interested in that, like, obviously I'm open to having a conversation. This mm -hmm. is just like, this is experimental to show everyone purposes. No, it's good. I, I need this because I have never, I've never really been on a big sales call like, like that. So, mm -hmm. and you, you would do all of that with like the exploring um, on a sales call. You would on a discovery Yeah, this call. was this, this is the short, sweet to the point. Right. I, I wanted to make sure we, this is about 30, 35 minutes. Um, but I usually have an hour to 90 minutes. I like to drop in. I like to get really personal. I like to understand people. I like to make them cry. It's like, I don't know. It's like a weird thing I have <laughs> um, as, as some of you can attest. Um, so I'm going to drop this in the chat. Um, thank you so much for, for doing this. Um, this is the document. Take it and make a copy of it. Right. So make sure you don't leave before you have that, because this is going to change. Like this is, the, this is the secret sauce, you guys. 